Hey guys, it's Kristen with Mermaid Wax. I'm gonna go over waxing rules, so like do's and don'ts before and after waxing. Um, <clears throat> now I do have my paper because I am not going to pretend to try to memorize all of this because I will definitely forget something, if not multiple things. So if you see me looking down, my cheat sheet, <laughs> that's why. Um, and before I jump in, if any of y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to comment down below, like, subscribe, anything I missed, anything that I might not have covered. Um, I'm always happy to answer it and I do answer all of my um, comments. So never hesitate to reach out. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go over the don'ts first and then we'll go over the do's. So first thing, don't go to a tanning bed or get sunburned within 48 hours before or after your wax appointment. Now, first things first, please, please, please do not go to a tanning bed. Um, I, I mean, I, I did way back in the day, many, many times in high school and college and, um, the damage that it causes is just not worth it. <laughs> um, but all it's doing is cooking your skin. It'll leave your skin dry. Um, waxing is natural exfoliant. So if you have sunburned or really dry skin, the wax can, has the potential to remove layers of skin that we don't want to lift your skin. Um, definitely don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to wax over damaged skin. Um, so I always recommend wait 48 hours before a waxing appointment and 48 hours after a waxing appointment. Um, now, if you're gonna do like a spray tan or like a rub on tan, something like that, um, you definitely wanna get waxed first. <laughs> uh, so get waxed first, you can just wait a day, you don't have to wait 48 hours, wait one day um, or longer if you want. And then you can do um, your spray tan or like, you know, roll on tan, rub on tan. Um, that's totally fine. Definitely recommend that over going to a bed. Um, don't put on lotion or makeup prior to your appointment. So the wax is not going to be able to adhere to the hair if there's a barrier in between it. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is having uh, like an eyebrow wax appointment or a full face appointment and then they walk in with a full blown gorgeous face of makeup and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to remove all of this <laughs> because the wax isn't going to adhere. Um, not only does that just, it just, it takes, it's gonna take a bit to fully get your face clean in that aspect. Um, but then we just ruined your masterpiece. So um, don't put on makeup, if you're doing your legs, don't put on lotion, we're not gonna judge you. We just wanna do our job and do it the best we possibly can. Um, so definitely don't put on anything before your appointment so that we can ensure that everything goes smoothly. Um, don't take a hot bath, um, go like sign up in like a sauna or go swimming or even take a hot shower directly after your appointment. Um, I always recommend um, at least 24 hours between doing anything like that. Like a lukewarm shower, that's fine, but don't take like a scalding hot shower right afterwards. Again, we just, ripped out hair from your body. Um, and so we wanna make sure that all of those hair follicles seal back up. Um, and so you're not introducing like bacteria or infection or um, dirt, anything like that, which can, can potentially mess up everything that we just did. Um, same thing, don't go to the gym following your appointment. Also don't go to the gym before your appointment. Oh my goodness. There's so many times when someone's like, oh, I just got out of a hot yoga class. And I'm like, great. <laughs> Don't come sweaty, that's gross. Um, Cause then especially if you, if then we have to wax you and then you're gonna put sweaty clothes back on. That's just not, oh my gosh. Um, same thing with afterwards, same thing like, you know, with the pool, we just ripped your hair out. Let's give that uh, time to heal and then you can go to the gym tomorrow. But um, you definitely wanna take it easy for the next 24 hours just to ensure that you don't mess up anything that we just did. Um, don't apply deodorant within at least six hours after your appointment. The next day is best um, for underarms. I know we all have the desire to put on deodorant. Um, they're gonna remove it whenever they, but you know, clean it off whenever they wax your underarms. Um, but if you can, just let it be the rest of the day. If you absolutely have to, wait at least six hours to help ensure that your skin seals up. Um, don't shave in between waxing appointments. This is massive. Um, if you shave in between your waxing appointments, you're messing up your hair growth cycle. 
Um, the best time to wax is between three and six weeks. So then if you shave, you're going to get your schedule all out of whack and then we're gonna have to start all over again. Um, oh, it's just awful. I would cringe and you cannot lie to us because we will know if you shaved, it's like a superpower that us estheticians have when it comes to waxing people. We are going to know. So definitely do not shave. Just keep scheduling your appointments, stay on top of your schedule. You'll be fine, your hair is going to thin out. Um, less hair is gonna grow back, which is amazing. So it's gonna hurt less. It's gonna be less noticeable when it does come back, but do not shave. Um, don't wear tight fitting clothing, like leggings or skinny jeans, anything that's like really um, tight and like causes a lot of friction. Um, it can, you know, cause some like a rash, which we don't wanna do. So definitely don't wear tight fitting clothing. Um, don't touch freshly waxed skin. Um, especially when it comes to my face. I have, for whatever reason, a strong desire to touch my face anytime I wax my face. Um, and you don't want to do that because you don't want to introduce something and cause yourself to get a pimple or whatever just because you're, it feels so cool <laughs> to touch your freshly waxed skin. Um, just let it be, let it heal, let it be pretty, um, and keep your hands away. Um, this is my last don't. Do not go to a nail salon. Obviously, not ill. Uh, not all nail salons are equal. Not ill. Oh, not all nail salons are bad. <laughs> um, however, let them stick to what they are good at, and that is nails. I have seen and I've experienced myself so many things that. Um, I would never feel comfortable going to a nail salon, whether it comes from um, seeing them double dipping wax sticks, not wearing gloves, um, the dirtiness of the pots. Um, oof, I mean, the work alone that they, I mean, like I, back when I was 16, I went to a nail salon and um, they cut off the entire, like from the arch down, tail end of my brow um, and it took me years to grow back um, and my skin lifted and because most likely they'll use soft wax instead of hard wax which is so much harsher on the skin um go to somebody that they do their majority of their profession is waxing or the only thing they do is waxing um there's a lot of estheticians that do facials and waxing of course that's totally fine um but someone where that is the main part of their business. Um, it's not something they do like once a week. That's not enough. Um, don't put your precious body in man the hands of a nail salon. Only put your hands in the hands of a nail salon. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> let's go to the do's. <laughs> um, do grow your hair at least a fourth of an inch. That's about the length of a grain of rice. Um, takes about three to four weeks to do. Um, the hair's too short, it's gonna to be too hard to pull out and it's just gonna snap and break. If the hair's too long, then it can be, um, it, the hairs can get uh, like tangled and then it can also snap and break. Also, that's when you get into different hair growth cycles coming back in. So um, the best time to wax is between three and six weeks. Um, do exfoliate within 48 hours of your appointment. Um, so this is really big for say like Brazilian, uh, for legs, even for arms, you want to make sure you exfoliate. So naturally, you know, we have, you know, like dead skin cells and especially when you've been waxing, this makes a big difference. Um, waxing pulls hair from the root. So what grows back in is a soft, fine baby hair. So that hair because it's softer and finer, it can be harder to push through the skin sometimes, which can cause it just to like go back under, um, even where you can see it. So it looks like it's on the surface, but it's actually not. It's just below a layer of dead skin. I see this all the time, especially with legs. Um, and so you need to exfoliate to get all that dead skin off. That way the hair is all exposed and you can easily remove it. Um, I mean, if you don't exfoliate and your waxer asks you if you exfoliate and you lie to them, they're gonna know. It's like some crazy superpower that we have that you um, are lying about exfoliating. So exfoliating and then shaving in between. Those are our two um, 
two superpowers. Um, but yeah, so definitely if you're getting your legs waxed, exfoliate, Brazilian exfoliate. I mean, in general, you want to exfoliate everything, but definitely for Brazilian and um, for legs for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, do ensure your esthetician is aware of medications you are taking. So this is an important, um, uh, in case there's any contra, um, contraindications with waxing. So things like retin-A, Accutane, glycolic acid, chemical peels, especially salicylic acid, antibiotics. A lot of the medications uh, can cause your skin to thin out. Um, so that means it's easier for the skin to lift. Um, so you definitely want to tell them if you're on any medications so that they can be aware and then take different precautions or possibly reschedule your appointment depending on what you are taking to ensure your safety and the safety of your skin. Um, do shower prior to your appointment. You always wanna come fresh and clean. This will just ensure there's no lotion, oil, dirt um, on your skin so there's nothing um, potentially in the way of um, the wax adhering to your skin. Always come freshly from a shower. Uh, do wear loose fitting clothes to your appointment. So um, things that are breathable, like cotton, um, dress, skirt, sweatpants, loose fitting jeans um, for underwear, I'd recommend cotton, um, or even just going commando. Uh, you just wanna provide as little friction as possible in between you, um, your clothing and your skin. We just kinda wanna let everything calm down and heal because we just pulled your hair out. Uh, loose fitting clothing um, and then do wax every three to six weeks so I kind of touched base on this before if it's anything shorter than six weeks and the hair is most likely too short anything longer than six weeks it starts getting iffy where it's too long and you start getting into multiple hair growth cycles so the best time the safe zone I say is always between three and six weeks you can always adjust it a little bit if you need to but for the most part for most people 99.99% .99 of people between three and six weeks is the best time to get waxed. Um, and then last but not least, go to um, a reputable salon. How does their website look? Um, do they even have a website? <laughs> I've seen some people that don't have websites at all. Um, uh, is, it, is it professional and knowledgeable? How is their booking system? Is this by calling or by texting? How does the person sound on the phone or do they answer fast? How busy are they? Because a busy salon is good. That means they're good at their job. People are coming back and returning, which is huge. Um, how are their reviews? Reviews are massive. Um, Google, the socials. Um, I don't recommend looking at Yelp because for Yelp, the businesses have to pay Yelp in order for all of their reviews to show up and for their business to show up um, first or at a higher level on Yelp. So I never cared about Yelp. I never look at Yelp. Um, so I definitely wouldn't recommend going over that. Um, uh, but yeah, looking over their socials, Facebook, Instagram, things like that, just business as a whole. It's also really good to get recommendations from friends and from their experiences, because if their friends trust them, then you should be able to as well. Um, but definitely do research um, before going to someone um, and that will make your wax experience so much better. So I hope this helps. Thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions or anything that I missed, um, anything that you want me to cover, then let me know. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.